Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. XRP here on the daily, trading right now at about 57.7. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the crypto market doesn't look so great today. I mean, this is just the micro perspective, of course. When we zoom out, uh, the entire crypto market is uh, trending upward. Believe me, believe me, it is trending upward. But right now, XRP just kind of hovering um, in this level of support that it found back in uh, late June, we are seeing that retrace to these old levels of resistance from back in February and uh, also right over here from back in December. So this is initially where we saw that resistance. Okay, we saw it there. We saw it over here. And now old resistance is becoming new support. We're seeing it down here on the XRP chart. Bitcoin here right now trading at about 31,400. So still, you know, kind of relatively flat, right? You know, no uh, real upward momentum, just kind of hovering in and around here, finding its support here and uh, really just kind of holding on to that level that we saw that correction back in January, just kind of hugging that level there. So $30,000, uh, you know, I talked before in a former video, uh, you know, just uh, discussing this idea that uh, $30,000 is that uh, kind of that psychological level that traders are feeling comfortable trading Bitcoin at, at this moment in time. The good news, guys, though, we do know institutions have been buying up in and around here and, uh, you know, waited for that uh, significant 50% correction to do so. So, yes, 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 I understand if you got into crypto within the last few months, you are probably pooping your pants. However, you know, for a lot of us, when we zoom out here and uh, if you've been in this space for a while, you do know this is just another correction, another lull before we can see the market continue to move up. I'm going to continue here, guys, with this tweet from XRP Crypto Wolf. The XRP Ledger Foundation has set up an office in Estonia, and they look forward to having XRPL developers visit them. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but apparently Estonia is a big hub for blockchain development. And so uh, I just have the XRPLF.org website up here. This is the XRP Ledger Foundation. We value our role as an independent organization acting in the best interests of the XRP Ledger. We believe trust is foundational to our mission and building trust is a slow, steady process. We believe in close working relationships with developers and organizations that build and contribute on the XRP ledger. We value having the resources and support to compete on an equal playing field with other foundations in achieving our goals. We value cultivating a diverse XRP ledger ecosystem where many entities contribute and benefit from the XRP ledger. So uh, you guys can see here the building going up, xrplf.org, right up here. They got a crane putting up the sign up there. Uh, so interesting news coming out of Estonia. I wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for pointing that out. And Michael at Val5 Links posting this article here, Major Ripple Not Partner obtains Bank of Thailand approval. So this is big for SCB. One of the largest private banks in Southeast Asia, Siam Commercial Bank, has obtained a license for its operations with RippleNet Digital Payments Processor. Uh, according to information shared by Crypto Eri, uh, Thailand headquartered Siam Bank now has all of its operations authorized by Bank of Thailand. So uh, their central bank over there. As such, it can leave the sandbox with a full range of instruments including a RippleNet Fuel digital payments module. Its money transfer application allows users to transfer funds between 12 countries. The US dollar, Euro, Singapore dollar, and British pound are accepted by SCB as payment methods. These guys have been partnered with Ripple for a while, and uh, now they have finally obtained that uh, Bank of Thailand approval. So really great news there coming out of Southeast Asia. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Another one from XRP Crypto Wolf, guys. Mayor Scott Conjure is determined to turn Jackson, Tennessee into a major cryptocurrency hub. So uh, this coming back to the United States, Jackson, the eighth largest city in the state of Tennessee, plans to allow its citizens to pay their property taxes in Bitcoin. This coming from the mayor. He just uh, announced this on Friday, which was yesterday. The city's blockchain task force also wants employees to dollar cost average the largest cryptocurrency. Uh, in a separate tweet, the laser-eyed politician raised concerns about dollar debasement. So he's concerned that, uh, you know, the U.S. is printing too much cash and uh, that the dollar will be debased because of inflation. Why do we accept inflation, he asks? Why don't we demand more from our federal government? 6.3% uh, in two years, 172.8% in my lifetime. Every year, our dollar is worthless. So he's actually taking it 
one step further. And, uh, you know, I was talking about this in the, in a video when I was uh, discussing El Salvador and, uh, you know, kind of encouraging their citizens to jump on Bitcoin. Uh, you know, it's good when the market is low and Bitcoin appreciates in value. But if you're jumping on Bitcoin at the top and then we see the market plunge by 85%, I mean, that is by no means any stretch either. Then, uh, you know, the citizens of El Salvador could lose 85% of their net worth. And so, you know, there's this idea that it's good to get into Bitcoin and yes, you could use it for payment, I, I, I suppose in certain circumstances. Uh, and, and this mayor here, Mayor Scott Conjure actually is saying, you know, uh, we want people to uh, dollar cost average in Bitcoin. So uh, don't buy it all right away. Don't buy at all time high or anywhere near all time high. Interesting proposal here uh, from the mayor of Tennessee. Wanted to thank uh, XRP Crypto Wolf for posting that. And another post here, guys, from Honda Wrecked here on Twitter. Uh, this was brought to my attention by Doddler for XRP. Breaking Hong Kong SFC says Binance is not authorized to offer its services. So uh, Hong Kong becoming another region in the world where Binance is now being scrutinized. The regulatory watchdog said Binance group of companies are not licensed or authorized to offer any kinds of services in Hong Hong Kong. Uh, they became the eighth regulator to issue a warning against Binance. We heard about uh, Italy. We heard about the Cayman Islands, Japan, Canada, uh, Thailand, Singapore, the UK. So now there's a whole slew of countries that are um, picking through this with a fine tooth comb and realizing, hey, look, Binance, not legal to operate shop in our countries. And, uh, you know, more countries are now following suit. Again, the Binance saga continues. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Don't want to dwell on this too much. But I do want to mention this, guys, with regards to the XRP ledger. If you do have a ledger, uh, just be careful because there are a lot of scams, crypto scams specifically that happen online during bull markets. And uh, I wanted to mention this because I personally own a ledger and uh, I feel like every so often I should probably make these types of public service announcements for people who do have their cryptocurrency safe on a ledger uh, to protect your cryptocurrency. If you guys don't have a ledger and you do want one, I do have an affiliate link in the description of this video. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, I, I just wanted to bring this though to your attention though. This coming from XRP underscore Crow here on Twitter. Don't use fake ledger clone websites. So here are some examples where um, the scammers are using fake clone websites like with a dot under the E uh, or the, the, the D and the G in the word ledger are uh, mixed up or ledger support.io. These are all fake websites, guys. So just be careful if you do plan on going to ledger, uh, you should probably type it in the address bar and bookmark it yourself. Don't click on any of these links for fear that your uh, private information may be exposed. Uh, so just a public service announcement. Thank you to uh, Stetis here on Twitter for posting that. And so we've got a verdict now on the Hinman deposition as well, guys. This posted by James K. Fillon here on Twitter. Uh, he will be deposed on July 27th. So the parties have made substantial progress in narrowing and resolving the privilege issues and will continue to confer. Parties will report to court on their progress on Monday by 5 p.m. So uh, it has been confirmed July 27th, the new date. Uh, they're not rushing it along for July 19th. They're going to push it. Uh, it sounds like push it about a week. I suppose they had to take into consideration Hinman's schedule and uh, probably have to prep him before the deposition takes place. He probably has to find a lawyer, so on and so forth. He probably already has a lawyer. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's, it's being pushed, guys. So this is the date to uh, now pay attention to July 27th, 2021. Uh, meanwhile, uh, with regards to the SEC, Hester Peirce just posted this on Twitter yesterday. If you have ideas about how regulators can better communicate with retail investors, here's an opportunity to share them. And she uh, posted this in here. Okay, FINRA requests comments on effective methods to educate newer investors. And so this was a special notice. I, I didn't know about this. It was posted at the end of June and uh, the uh, official comment period expires uh, August 30th, 2021. So here is your opportunity, guys, to discuss with regulators how you think retail investors should be communicated to. And uh, I suppose, you know, you can get into transparency Transparency, I suppose you can tell your story about holding XRP. Uh, the link is there, so I will link it in the description of the video. Jungle Inc. down here actually posting something quite apropos. How about you answer simple questions in an honest and straightforward manner? How about you publish guidelines so investors, innovators, and users of crypto understand WTF you are doing? Howie is great, but your enforcement is quite bizarre. And he posts this clip here uh, just from CNBC. Uh, with Jay Clayton here being interviewed. Listen to this. Let me move on. What about altcoins? We have discussed Bitcoin, but there are other altcoins out there. There is Ether, for example. There is Ripple. Are, are, is Ether a security? So, Bob, I'm not going to comment on specific 
crypto assets and whether they are a security or are not a security. And then it just ends there. Not gonna comment. It's almost like they're hiding it from us, okay? We, we plan on doing this, but we're not gonna tell you what we're doing. We're gonna just do it and then we're going to bring a company like Ripple to court and now you're kind of on your own, you XRP hodlers. Now you've got to sweat while this lawsuit plays out. It seems as though that's what they're doing. I mean, I don't know if you guys have a different opinion on that. Put it in the comment section if you do, or if you don't. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's always just great to just get some uh, different perspectives on things. Shane down here saying, Howie test is ineffective for blockchain and crypto. We need a new policy framework to reference going forward. Uh, Agent Smith V3 down here saying, propose regulations, then get public comment, post final regulations in federal register. Sure. Dictator know it all saying, you know, admit that the SEC has screwed up and give clarity to XR the SEC behavior is disgusting. So, uh, of course, a lot of people are going to have different opinions on this. I will link this in the description. I will also link this in the description for you guys if you want to uh, comment at finra.org. And just on that point here, James Rule XRP uh, posting this. I thought this was kind of funny. Okay, XRP Army, it looks like the SEC has had enough of us. Be sure to tag them at their new handle. So, apparently, the old SEC underscore news Twitter account no longer exists. And I did uh, check for myself, it does no longer exist. They are now available to tweet at, at SECGov. So that is their new Twitter handle. You can see all their followers have been uh, migrated over to that new account. I thought that was kind of funny, you know, considering, uh, you know, the XRP community, very vocal community, has been, I'm sure, tweeting out to the SEC quite a lot over the last six months or so. Um, and then we have this, guys. So along the same lines, a digital asset investor just posted this this morning, and I thought I'd bring it up because it is uh, pertinent to what we've been discussing with regard to the SEC and Ripple case. When Warren Davidson points out that he appreciates Hinman making clear that Ethereum is not a security, why does Clayton not clarify that this was Hinman's opinion only? Clayton didn't correct it for a reason. So this is actually a tweet here from Bank XRP, SEC Security and Exchange Commission Chair Jay Clayton testified at the House of Financial Services in June of 2018. Let me play you this clip, guys. Critical distributed ledger technology. I think we need to get this regulatory certainty. Uh, to use an example uh, of, of folks that have tried to do this, Ripple's just one of uh, many digital assets that come to mind. And I'm aware there are numerous court cases regarding this company. Uh, do you think it's prudent for Congress or the SEC to lead the way in clarifying uh, what is a security or commodity instead of waiting for the courts? So I think as regulators of the securities market, it's important for us to bring clarity to those markets. I, I do. But I think we are doing that. We have, we have turned to this space. We have issued guidance. The space is developing. But all of that guidance and our enforcement actions are rooted in a very well-tested approach to the raising of capital in the United States. So right here, he's talking about the Howey test and, uh, you know, everything that the SEC has uh, scrutinized up until this point, uh, how they have classified whether something is a security or not has been through that Howey test. Let me continue the clip. And I, I can't be more clear about this. I am, I am not going to advocate for any fundamental changes in the way we raise capital to accommodate the technology. Now, the te technology can make what we do more efficient but I'm not gonna change the rules because we have a new technology. So he says he's not gonna change the rules because there's a new technology out there. The Howey test exists, not gonna change the rules. There have been new ways to raise capital in the crypto space. Let me continue the clip. Yeah, fair point. The Howey test has been there and I, I appreciate, uh, frankly, Director Hinman uh, last week clarifying that Ether is not viewed as a security. There had been some concern after uh, some of your remarks that uh, everything looks like it uh, fits with the Howey test and, uh, you know. When you're raising capital for a project? Right. And, and as I think you and I agree, certainly many companies uh, have essentially engaged in regulatory arbitrage mm -hmm. and used white papers to um, uh, raise more capital than they could through the existing framework. However, some company for securities and that body of law, I think you guys have taken a, a, an effective approach. Um, and we want to help people. 
I don't, I don't, this is, I'm not saying do it and then we want to help people. And you set up an them. office to be able to do that yes. and, and, and equipped it with resources. Uh, so, so I appreciate that. Okay, and then the clip ends there. So again, this is from 2018. The SEC does uh, think they have a, uh, a method that uh, they don't have to change because of the technology. Uh, fast forward three years, and now we're looking perhaps at new frameworks because the Howey test uh, doesn't, shouldn't, can't really apply to cryptocurrencies. I mean, this is still a big question mark that I'm sure the regulators are uh, still maybe scratching their heads over. Uh, this is why, guys, it is important to fill out these types of uh, surveys here or these questionnaires uh, like this one that Hester Pierce did tweet about just yesterday. Again, link in the description. Interesting clip here. And, uh, you know, to Digital Asset Investor's point, Jay Clayton did not actually uh, refute uh, what uh, what uh, th what Warren Davidson here did say about Hinman's description of Ethereum either. So that's interesting. Also, if you were to uh, refer back to the video I did yesterday, guys, I'll link that up here in the top right hand corner uh, with that uh, with that short clip of Vitalik Buterin uh, discussing the funding model of Ethereum and how he said it was a combination, a hybrid of the Ripple model and the Mastercoin model. Uh, refer back to that video if you guys didn't catch that, because I think that that might have uh, some significance here too to this case. So all very interesting stuff. Of course, we are still at the mercy of the courts to decide the verdict, what will happen to Ripple and XRP. But meanwhile, guys, the cryptocurrency space just keeps growing. And, uh, you know, this kind of a, a positive tweet here from XRP Mommy here on Twitter. Uh, if the fundamentals haven't changed, which they have not, I continue to buy every dip. I've done the research. We're still in a bull market. Every coin that I own, I know will 10x minimum in 2021. Wow. That's only, uh, we've only got six months for that. I'd say 2021, maybe early 2022, uh, just to kind of give it a bit of a buffer. XRP, Quant, ALBT, and VXV. Utility kicking in soon as well, zero doubt. And I know this is gonna sound a little random, guys. I don't know if you guys caught uh, Electronium. In the chart for Electronium the other day, take a look at that. This is Electronium here on the daily. And uh, over the last two days, Look at that, it has spiked about 73%. Even today on the daily, it's uh, gone as high as over 80% uh, over the last two days. Very much an anomaly from the rest of the cryptocurrency market. I don't usually touch on other cryptocurrencies that I'm not invested in. Uh, however, I thought this was interesting because I saw this from Crypto Bull here on Twitter. There's some big news circulating that Electronium are joining forces with Ripple and the Quant Network. Could the Digital Pound Foundation Limited be helping to form a CBDC? And so here is a document here, just a screen grab from a document from the Digital Pound Foundation Limited. Uh, and so it's interesting because here are some of the corporations that are involved, Electronium Limited, Billin Financial, Quant Network, and Ripple Labs. So, you know, some people have been talking about this. Real Crypto Research here also noticed that ETN was pumping uh, over the last couple of days. So what is the Digital Pound Foundation? Well, it looks like they are a company, a newly incorporated company, incorporated just last month, so uh, less than a month old. And some of the directors on their board include Susan Friedman, uh, Richard John Ells, Gilbert Verdian, and Jeremy James O'Brien Wilson. And so Quantany here on Twitter posted this. Gilbert Verdian is uh, the CEO of Quant, Jeremy O'Brien from Barclays, Susan Friedman from Ripple, and Richard Ells from Electronium. So are we getting some more indications that uh, Ripple is uh, partnering with some of these other companies like Quant and Electronium to uh, perhaps produce a CBDC, uh, a digital pound for the UK? Or could something even bigger be happening here? Quant Network CEO Gilbert Verdian uh, has been appointed for the Digital Pound Foundation. I think this is enough for the Wall Street to FOMO in. Check out the big picture here. Uh, just another screen grab with regards to this tweet. And I know some of you guys are big into this project, Quant, here. Uh, some of you guys are maybe still learning a little bit about it. Me, myself, just again, full disclosure, I am not invested in uh, QNT, at least not at the moment. I don't know, should I be? If you guys are, let me know down in the comments what you think. Another tweet here just with regards to this from Dr. Shepard. Big news circulating that Electronium uh, are joining forces with Ripple Labs and the Quant Network. So again, uh, just this same document here that I originally saw uh, from Crypto Bulls. So a lot of people circulating this. The other thing that I found interesting, guys, with regards to this is this connection here. Susan Friedman, we know, is the representative from Ripple that has uh, joined in on this Digital Pound project. She's also listed in this document here, guys, head of public policy at Ripple with regards to the Digital Currency Governance Consortium. She is one of the contributors. And let me reveal to you where this document is coming from, guys. That's right. 
This is another World Economic Forum document published in January of 2021. So Susan Friedman, a connection to the World Economic Forum. Of course, there is also that connection to Ripple. Now we have Electronium and the Quant Network uh, seeming to be teaming up with Ripple to create uh, something new, a digital pound perhaps, a CBDC for the UK. And maybe the XRP community's sleuthing skills are actually quite advanced. And the reason I say that is because this is a website here, guys, called secrets-base.co.uk. And the Digital Pound Foundation Limited is also listed here. UK Secrets Exposed on secret-base.co.uk. This is a website highlighting these types of things, these types of collaborations. And if you just go to the main page here, enter the covert world of military bases, GCHQ, M15, M16, spy centers, and more. Now, this is, I guess, exposing or, you know, dot connecting some other projects here. You guys can see on this website there is uh, a lot of different types of uh, stories and uh, information you can click on. But they've also included the Digital Pound Foundation Limited, something that the XRP community uh, seem to have dug up and is circulating within the XRP community. Clearly, this is likely not in mainstream media. But why? Why is it secret? Do they want this to be exposed or are these documents supposed to have been kept secret. Do the founders of this new Digital Pound Formation Limited company that was just incorporated less than a month ago, uh, do they care that this is exposed? Or is there a reason? Do they want to keep this information classified? Well, I can tell you one thing. It's no secret. Electronium has been surging in price. Too bad we can't say the same thing for Quant or XRP, unfortunately. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.